And hello, this is Eamon O'Brien and you're so welcome to the Reluctant Speakers Club Expert Series. And today we're going to take a fresh look at the whole area of inspiring and influencing people. And we have a fantastic person sitting here in our expert chair all the way from Wales. It is Rebecca Jones. Rebecca, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to have you here. Now, for those of you who don't know, of course, Rebecca, you are the Red Shoes businesswoman and you are a motivational business speaker. You're also the president of Professional Speaking Wales. Yeah. And we're delighted to have you here in Dublin here today. And also a business mentor. But I want to talk about the topic of exciting people okay. and, the, and what, as speakers, we need to think about to really get people more on side, to pull an audience into you, and then thinking about that beyond the podium. So if we think about the types of businesses that you work with, and you work with a lot of charities and others, what are the biggest challenges that communicators face when it comes to winning attention and getting excitement going? Okay, well, first of all, we have to remember that just because we're excited about something and love our topic, because, you know, if you don't love your topic, then you've got a problem, haven't you? Yeah. So we love our topic and we're excited about it. But that doesn't mean other people are. So we need to open it up to them so they can become excited. And the easiest way to do that is to help them set themselves within that scene, if you like. So give them some story or help them see how it would relate to them quicker that you can get them to see, well, that could relate to me, that would help me, then they're going to start becoming excited about the prospect of understanding it, knowing how to use it, and then you've got them on side. You can start giving them the information. Now, obviously, you are oftentimes coming into organisations where they're having a bit of a snag. <laughs> just they're a having, tad. <laughs> having a, a, snag, a bit of an issue. And so, um, uh, Tell me a little bit about uh, the tack that you take, if you like, just to really start from where the audience is, I suppose. Okay, well, I, initially I used to think that if I went in softly, softly and got them on side, that that would work really, really well for me. And it kind of did, to begin with, to a, a degree. But what I then realised was actually being kind and soft and gentle isn't always the best approach. And yeah. actually... The best results for me is for me to go in and be that little bit of a contrary Mary, if you like, just be a little well, bit like awkward. A contrary Mary. A yeah. contrary Mary. Just go in there and, and, and tell them as it is. You know, they can carry on as they are. That's absolutely fine. But probably if they do that, the end result isn't what they want. Yeah. So have to make people feel a little bit uncomfortable, first of all. Yeah. Get them to realise that the, what they're doing at the moment just isn't working. Yeah. And once they've got that, and I've got them to open up to, well, yeah, it isn't working, I can help them then move forward. So, yeah, it, it's not about being the, the person that they love. I mean, I was talking with you this morning here in Dublin and saying, you know, sometimes it is about me telling you the messages you don't want to hear. Yeah. And when I see my audience shuffle uncomfortably, I think, yeah. excellent, I've got them. But, it's, but, but <laughs> it's in a framework, and actually I'm having flashbacks. Uh, umpty dumpty years ago, I had to give my wife injections, and oh, okay. I had never done this before and I realized because I thought that it would, well maybe if I do this really slowly it won't be so bad. <laughs> it turns out that's a dreadful plan. <laughs> you actually have a lot less pain sometimes by being more direct but in a constructive way. Yes and, and what you've got to remember is if you're uh, using pain in order to get people to listen and think you've got to give them the solutions. You do. Yeah. Otherwise that's cruel. Yeah. You can't say to people, look, if you carry on the way you are, your, your business will collapse or your life will be awful. Yeah. And then say, bye then. Yeah. That's just not fair. So you've got to make them have the pain and understand that that pain isn't what they want. Yeah. And they want to move away from that pain. And then give them the process, the steps to move away from that and pain. And with that in mind, I know you're a big fan of intrapreneurship. Yeah. And not everybody knows what <clears> that means. But I guess it's from the ground up. But why don't you get into a little bit of why that's a good idea and what does that do actually in terms of inspiring people to okay. get with it? So the entrepreneurship model is also co called sometimes corporate enterprise. So it's about having an enterprising mindset but within an organisation. So you need employed staff to be more entrepreneurial. Now it can work at all levels. So if you think about it from a small business perspective, often the small business owner is the entrepreneurial person they start to recruit people in. 
And those staff that come in don't have that entrepreneurial understanding. So therefore, they then work within that business without fully understanding what the entrepreneur is trying to achieve. So the more that entrepreneur can help the staff understand what it is they want to achieve and why, then those staff can engage and help. Because actually, being the entrepreneur is quite tiring. And you it do need other people is, yeah. to come up with suggestions. Yeah. So an entrepreneurial mindset is about seeing things from a different perspective, about understanding that to make a business successful, it's about really understanding who you're engaging with, who your audience is, and what it is you're offering them, how you're going to bring them money in from that, and then how you're going to keep that going long term, the sustainability element. Yeah. So those three parts, when you think about it, the majority of staff don't do that. They don't particularly think about who it is they're offering it to. They just offer it because you've asked them to do yeah. that. Yeah. They don't necessarily think about the money element because, well, they don't need to because you're going to still pay them next month. That's right. But yeah. once they start realizing that if they don't help you bring the money in, they won't get paid next month, they will help you bring that money in. So it's about eng engaging your staff to be more involved in the business. And to do that, you just need to help them understand how the business works. Exactly. So it's yeah. really, really simple. And yeah. it works with small business owners, it can work in charities, it can work with government bodies, and I do it with big corporate companies as well. Now, the elephant in the room, of course, is that while that sounds terrific, mm -hmm. and it really does, I'd buy it, right? I would imagine that oftentimes you come across a variance of attitude. <laughs> and so you might get some people who really like the idea yeah. of being given an opportunity to do other, uh, more and more. And, and you might come across others who would think, well, I'm going to get paid anyway. Do I really have to do this? So how do you get the balance right? So that's very, very common. Um, and actually, that's great for me because I do not want a whole office full of entrepreneurs. Yes, it would be exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm aiming to do is to have the whole organization understand the need for it and embrace it and accept that for some of them, they will just support other people to do it. So they're going to give them the tools, the, the framework to do that in. What we really just want is for a few staff to go, oh, that's for me, that. Yeah. And they, we encourage them and embrace that, and they go off and, and do that. What I need is for the other staff to enable that to happen yeah. and not be blockers. So yeah. I talk a lot about not having blockers in your organization, but enablers in your organization. So, and, and that's kind of it. It's, it's yeah. really that simple. So. I can go into an organization, I'll often speak at the staff conference, hopefully a few staff will come up to me and go, oh, I like that, I want to do that. Yeah. I'll work with those to encourage them and show them how to do it, how to help that organization bring in new income yeah. streams. And then I work with the rest of the staff to say, let them do it, give them the mechanisms to do it. And a lot of the time it's about changing the culture so that we don't give blame yeah, because absolutely. It's because the trouble because is because it will be many a slip twixt of course. cup and lip. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. So it's about understanding it's a learning thing. Yeah. So it also works really well with an organisation that's trying to encourage more learning within the organisation. So when we talk about learning organisations, where actually instead of blaming, we see, oh, well, that didn't quite work. Why not? Let's learn from that and grow and develop and move forward. Yeah. So it is about getting all of this t you know, team on board to feel okay, this is what we need to do. But they've also got to see it, and that's really important. So uh, actually, in that vein, I suppose the types of examples that you would have accumulated over the years um, can be especially yes. informative. Yeah. So what would come to mind if you think about it? Here's a great example of a transformation. Here's something that might get people excited. So sometimes they're really, really simple things. So I can be working with an organization, and I talk to the staff who want to be entrepreneurial about thinking of how to be entrepreneurial, and there's typical of, of a speaker, I talk about the three elements that you can do. Yeah. So one is to save money, yeah. so that's an entrepreneurial yeah. action, to yeah. save money. The second is to improve something you already do or give it to a new market. Yeah. And the third is to come up with something completely different. So some organizations are going for the completely different, some will improve and some are just going to save money. And that's absolutely fine. So sometimes I'll be working with an organization and a member of staff goes, actually, if we changed from doing this to this, this would save us money. Excellent. Quick win. Yeah. A quick win. Yeah. So those sorts of examples are, you know, yeah. common. They um, are. But the key thing, again, uh, is uh, I guess that when people are, if they want to get emotionally connected to the idea yeah. of uh, engaging in change, then they've got to be able to, if you like, see what that's going to look like when you yes. get to the end of the road. Yes. And 
Tell me about that a little bit. So, you know, uh, uh, again, think about any examples, things that you've been involved with in recent times. Okay. What would come to mind? So, um, some of the charities that I've worked with, they'll come to me because maybe their funding's been cut or they're unable to, to do what they want to do because that income isn't there anymore. And so we look at ways of bringing in an, an income stream um, in order to do what they want to do. So instead of worrying about it being about profit, because for a lot of people the word profit seems like a horrible word. No, it's, it's not. It's not a horrible <laughs> word. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But it is for a lot of people because it's a new concept for them. So what we talk about is having an income stream which will enable them to do what they want to do, so the good element that they want to do. So I've been working with a homelessness charity, and what we've been looking at is finding a way of bringing in an income which actually has nothing to do with homelessness at all, but they can use that money to do the, so the provision that they want as an enabler. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, sometimes you have to do something completely separate. So I've worked with a green charity, and we've looked at how we can take the environment that they're working in, and we've been putting up um, TPs and um, sort of years and providing holiday accommodation, and the income from that enables them to go and work with Ooh, youngsters in and schools. The like, yeah. 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 So they're going to using that money to work with youngsters in schools to teach them about nature. That is fantastic. So it's not yeah. so far away, yeah. but sometimes, um, you know, we, we might end up creating a product that's nothing to do with yeah. the charity or the organisation, and that brings in an income that they can use in yeah. the way. And the key thing, I suppose, is you're showing that it's really doable. Yeah. It's really doable, and also it's not just doable from the staff's perspective, but often you can get volunteers involved, community groups involved. So I work a lot with housing organisations, yeah. and we work with their tenants. And actually, we can get the tenants to be involved in the um, projects as well. And at the same time, we're teaching them about enterprise. Maybe yeah. we'll spark the idea that they could run their own enterprise. Which is wonderful. And I have one final question for you. So now, you've been involved in speaking now for quite a few years. And if you think about all the things that you've learned oh. over the years, <laughs> all <laughs> the things that you've done, all the things, sometimes it went well, sometimes it didn't go so well. And you think, oh, here's the one thing that I have learned about really connecting with an audience. What would be top of your list? Oh, gosh. Um, I think the biggest thing for me that I had to learn was that what they wanted to hear was something different, a yes. different perspective, my view, not just you know something I've read in a book and regurgitating it, but actually what's my view of that. So fine, if you're teaching something that other people teach, that's not a problem, but you've got to give your perspective, your view of it, and sometimes you have to say... I don't agree with it. I don't agree, and this is why I don't. But it's challenging. It's challenging, it's challenging. yeah. Thank you so much no for, for being so well. much thank appreciated. You for me. Yeah, I'm delighted. This has been a wonderful interview again, and thank you so much for joining with the Reluctant Speakers Club Expert Series. And until the next time, happy speaking. <laughs>